Hi, I'm Sandra Hutchins. I'm the Sheriff Coroner of Orange County, and you're watching Facets Television. Hello, my name is Judge Jim Gray. I'm retired from the Orange County Superior Court, and you are watching Facets Television. I'm Kevin McDonald, and you're watching a new segment called OC's Most Wanted. And I want to give you a little background on where we came from and why we're here. My executive producer, David McNeil, and myself and the crew here for the last several years have been doing segments, programs, interviews, and so on about crime prevention, human trafficking and recovery prevention, education, talking with folks from law enforcement, members of the community, crime prevention professionals. And the bottom line is we thought, you know what, it's time to get out and get aggressive. We know there's America's Most Wanted. We know there are these other programs that are nationally based, but you know what, they don't focus on that case that's important enough for the local community and law enforcement to care, to want to get an answer, whether it's a missing person, a person of interest, somebody who's killed somebody and run, whatever it might be, the bottom line, it's important to us and our community. So we decided, you know what, we're going to take the power of this studio and our cameras at Facets TV and we're going to create OC's Most Wanted for you. We hope that you'll participate with us. We hope that you will be there for us when we ask for your help. I'm Kevin McDonald and I hope you'll watch OC's Most Wanted. I'm Kevin McDonald, and I am the host of Fast Television, but today we're here to talk about a new segment called OC's Most Wanted. With us today is going to be Lieutenant Jeff Halleck, who's with the Orange County Sheriff's Department as their public information officer. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. No problem. I appreciate it very much. Um, so as you know, we started this new program called OC's Most Wanted, and you and I had a conversation about a couple of the active cases that the department does, but briefly I'd like to know um, what is the general process when you get uh, the decision to make it a most wanted or a top level case for the department? Well, it, it's a case by case basis, obviously, and so a lot of it tends to um, go along with the investigation. We obviously defer to investigators to do as much follow up investigation as they can on a particular case, and many times when they run out of leads or run out of you know different things to follow up on then it's necessary to kind of make it more of a, a public event and put it out to the media and in, in the attempt to, to gain information or, or something from the media that would help push the, the case forward. So in that case then basically what's what's happening is they go through their normal process if they hit a wall and they believe it's a, a high enough profile case they hand it off and then it starts to be a, an outreach program right? That's correct I mean there's there's cases where they've got enough information to work right off the bat that they can move forward and hopefully make an arrest or, or do what they need to do. But at some point, like you said, they'll hit a wall or we feel that the, the public or the media can provide us an opportunity to gather some, some much needed information to solve a case. So I can tell you as a person who lives in Orange County, it's really um, great to hear the fact that there aren't that many cases that are being left outstanding to the degree that you need the public's help. So. But I do know there's a couple of cases. We spoke briefly about the Eric Alonzo case. So if you could tell me a little bit about Erica's case, how did it start, where has it gone, and, and what are you looking for in the way of a result from the public? Well, the status of the case today is that she is still missing, still being handled uh, by our homicide investigative unit, but as a missing person case. At this point, we don't have any information to lead us to believe that a crime has, in fact, been committed. We did, a couple of weeks ago, locate her vehicle that had been missing for about five to six weeks. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we're still moving forward trying to locate Ms. Alonzo. She went missing early morning of February 15th. It was a night, Valentine's night, that she spent with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. She was last seen that next morning at between 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning. She left his residence in the city of Irvine. And unfortunately, that's the last anybody has seen or heard from her. Um, we know that since then there's been no, um, no activity on her financial accounts or social media accounts, no cell phone activity, so 
obviously investigators and obviously her family are very concerned and so we're just moving forward with trying to gather as much information as we can. And that generally doesn't bode well. Was she considered to be mentally stable? Is there any reason to think that she would just wander off? I mean, or We don't have any information or evidence to indicate that she would have any motivation to, to wander off. Mm -hmm. and, um, just based on the fact that, you know, she was described by her friends and her family as a social media butterfly and for her not to be present on social media to them was very, very concerning and obviously that is to investigators also. No kidding. Um, so at this point, what is, uh, wh where can people find information on her? We'll be posting information in posters, but in general, if someone wants to figure out or track a case like this, where do they find information besides the likes of Orange County Crime Stoppers or someone like that? Well, all of our cases with the Orange County Sheriff's Department, we post all of our media releases or anything relative to the public on our website at mm -hmm. ocsd.org. Uh, if we were to update that case with some additional information, we obviously put out a media release as soon as we went public with the case, and then we followed that up with updated information when we located her vehicle. So if people want to go to our, our blog on ocsd.org, they can find the most up-to-date information. So let's circle back a little bit for those that may be following or have followed the case like I had. Um, there was a couple at a nightclub that seemed to be a, a point of interest at one point, but they've been cleared. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's correct. The information that we received was that Erica and her boyfriend were out the evening of February 14th at a nightclub in the city of Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. We we gained some surveillance video of another couple that was hanging out with Ms. Alonzo and her boyfriend and unfortunately her boyfriend didn't even know who the, these people were. They met them, they went back to Ms. Alonzo's boyfriend's house to hang out for a couple hours but he really didn't know who they were other than having met them at the nightclub. So we put that information out to the media and with the assistance of the media and getting those photos out the couple, both the male and the female, actually called the Sheriff's Department late that night and we were able to talk to them, but unfortunately they, they didn't really provide us any additional clues. They really just corroborated information that investigators already knew. Right, so we pretty much knew that, that there doesn't seem to be any reason at this point to believe they were involved. They just happened to be with them that evening. That is correct. I believe investigators do believe that they didn't have anything to do with the disappearance of Ms. Alonzo. Got it. Um, so if someone has a tip, um, what do you suggest is the best way to provide information to the department at this point? The easiest way is just to call our general number and that's area code 714-647-7000. Mm -hmm. We can provide that information to our department commander on duty 24 hours a day and based on the information that the person has, he can, we can direct that tip or that information to the appropriate investigative unit. Perfect. Okay. So let's move, move to another case that I'm uh, slightly familiar with, which is the burrito case. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Let's start from the beginning because I know that the folks watching don't have any background on it. Um, this has to do with the vehicular manslaughter of a child? That's correct. So can you go from the beginning and tell me where we are now? Yeah, this case began last year, March of 2014. It was actually it was in the city of San Juan Capistrano the evening following the Swallows Day Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, late that evening, Mr. Burrito Soto is accused of driving his vehicle. He was driving westbound on Junipero Cerro Road. He crossed over Camino Capistrano and into an adjacent parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we've released video of that collision, but you can see Mr. Burrito Soto as he gets into the parking lot. He accelerates pretty high rate of speed and eventually goes over an embankment mm -hmm. and collides with some large rocks on the side of the embankment. As a result of that collision, he had four of his children in the vehicle, but as a result of the collision, three of his children were injured pretty significantly, mm -hmm. and his five-year-old daughter uh, succumbed and died as a result of her injuries. Oh, so based on that, the preliminary investigation was believed that Mr. Brito Soto was driving under the influence of alcohol. He was arrested that evening. He was booked into jail. He was arraigned several days later. Uh, the district attorney's office filed vehicular manslaughter charges as well as some child abuse charges because the children that were in the in the car, all four of them, were not right. restrained properly. And no. so, so unfortunately, he's got injury and child endangerment. Absolutely, and, and investigators feel very strongly that the lack of restraint contributed to their significant injuries and to the death of the five-year-old daughter. But right. at any rate, he was arraigned uh, several weeks later. He posted a hundred thousand dollar bond. Uh, he was released from jail on that bond and has not been seen or heard from since. He has not showed up to any of the subsequent court dates. And so the case has been filed by the Orange County District Attorney's Office, but investigators, you know, beca because of the seriousness of this crime, we're really putting a lot of effort into attempting to locate Mr. Brito Soto and bring him to justice. And as our media releases have had said so far, we believe he does have ties locally to the city of San Juan Capistrano, but we also know he has ties to 
the state of Texas, the Chicago area, and even uh, down into Mexico. So he does have an international ties, and it is possible that he's crossed the border and gone down there. Could you, do we believe he could be comfortable at that point? I mean, that's not easy for an American to do, but if someone has prior ties. That is correct. And, you know, we've exhausted the resources that we have down in Mexico and then in the state of Texas and in Illinois and the Chicago area. We've exhausted resources we have in those areas in an mm -hmm. attempt to locate Mr. Brito Soto. But we've been unsuccessful so far, and so that's why we want to put that information out to the public. Well, I really appreciate your coming in this, this evening and talking with us, and I, I do want to say that I, I look forward to working with you in the department to see that as we get these cases um, that we can move them forward more quickly if possible and spread them into zones that may not be seen unless they're watching our program. So I really want to thank you for your thank time you, and all you do for, for the community. Uh, with us has been Lieutenant Jeff Halleck, with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. He is the public information officer, and we really appreciate him coming in. You are now watching the Orange County's Most Wanted News segment on Facets Television, and we hope you'll watch again soon.